rotational speed. Defined as, rotations per unit of time. Effective equation, speed equals, rotation slash time. Most common form is, RPM, rotations per minute. Can only be used while discussing something that is rotating. Answers the question, how long will it take this point on my rotating object to make a revolution and be back at the same reference point? Linear speed. Defined as, distance per unit of time. Effective equation, speed equals, distance slash time. Most common form is, mph, miles per hour, or kilometers per hour, kilometers per hour. Answers the question, how long will it take for this object to move from here to there? Most common speed used by everybody, driving speed. Hence it gets used in places it doesn't belong to try and explain a speed in wording more people can understand. Unfortunately, this is technically wrong and technically right at the same time, I will get more into that later. Differences or, tire speeds as an example. First, we need a tire, and while we are there, let's mark it for a reference point. Now we can see the differences between the two ways of measuring speed and hopefully understand why rotational speed is the true speed and more important than linear speed. Rotational speed. So literally this is only talking about how much something rotates in a period of time. Using our tire here, how many times our mark goes around in an hour or a minute or a second or however long. This could be expressed something like 6 rotation per 3 minutes 2 rotations per min 2 revolutions per min This is one is commonly referred to as RPM, like in your car. Pretty simple so far, right? Makes sense. Best part of using rotational speed? All five of the points on the tire all have the same speed. This is due to two facts. All points are rotating around a single axis. All points take the same amount of time to revolve back to the same point. How? All points are rotating at the same speed relative to each other, independent from their position, either to each other and the radius. This is true for all and any points that could have been picked on the tire. Rotational speed is best for comparisons. This means that scaling, scale, and thus scaling, I am defining as, representing in proportional dimensions, works perfect. If we had two objects spinning, with different sizes, diameters, but they rotate once in the same time reference, they have the same speed. Example. If we take a tennis ball and a bowling ball, and draw a line on each, and then rotate them so the lines each make one rotation in a minute. They are both rotating at one rotation per minute, that is the same speed. Now we can get our linear speed. No, we had linear speed before we had rotational speed. No. This is false. Utterly and completely. Linear speed in reliant on rotational speed. Rotational speed is not reliant upon linear speed. What? What do you mean we can't have a linear speed without rotational speed? That is correct. We need rotational speed to get linear speed. And this is where speed starts to get complicated. Complicated. How is speed complicated? Remember the five points we had earlier? Well, since they are each have a different distance from the center, that would mean their effective diameter is different. This means they each would have a different circumference. And this is what linear speed is. Linear speed deals with the circumference as it rotates. This means that relative to each other, each of these points are rotating at different speeds. Yes, even if there are two points that are directly next to each other, touching even, if they have a different distance from the center, radius, they will be traveling at different speeds. Even if these two points are just the size of molecules, this is still true. So since linear speed is calculated from the circumference, circumference equals 2 pi r, 
where R equals the radius. The average tire radius is 13.36565 inches. The circumference will be 83.9788514 inches. So if we rotate this average tire, 49040.916820 rotations in an hour. It will rotate at 65 miles per hour. How did I come up with that? 83.9788514 inches equals 0.00132524 miles. Rotations x distance equals 49040.916820 x 0.00132524 equals 65 miles in one hour. What? Yup. In order for the tire to go 65 miles per hour, it needs to rotate an average tire 49040.916820 rotations in an hour. Anyone else think that sounds crazy fast? It should. But it is true. But linear speed gets even crazier, but still just as true. Remember the five points from earlier? Each point was traveling at a different speed. If we rotate the tire, same radius of 13.36565 inches, at the same rotational speed as before, 49040.916820 rotations in an hour, that will give us a linear speed of 65 miles per hour. Each of these points have a different linear speed. This table shows how each location on the same rotating tire, with its different radius, affects its linear speed. With the innermost ring with its effective radius of 1.817728 inches, its linear speed of 8.84 miles per hour. While the outer circumference with its effective radius of 13.36565 inches, its linear speed of 65 miles per hour. Yes you read that right. Although it is a full tire, different parts of it are traveling at different speeds. And this is the problem with trying to use linear speed as a comparison of the speed of something rotating, as if you cannot convey that you are referencing the speed of one point using multiple measurements to compile the speed, the conclusion ends up with the incorrect assumption that the entire object is rotating at that speed. Since speed as a relative reference, using rotational speed is more accurate and much easier to compare as it is independent of the size. So why would someone want to use linear speed when rotational speed is better in every sense of the word? Because if the rotational speed is slow, but the radius is large, the converted linear speed appears to be much larger. This can be used to make something that is rotating slowly sound like it is moving at an insane velocity. But why? This would allow someone to make a technically correct statement but allow them to twist the truth to make people believe their truth. Two examples of this. The rotation of the Earth each day. With a circumference of 24,875.13063 miles. With a time for one rotation of 23.93444 hours. Gives us the speeds of. Linear 1039.302612 miles per hour. Rotational 0 0.0417807 rotations per hour. The orbit of the Earth around the Sun. With a circumference of 584 million miles. With a time for one rotation of 8,765.813 hours. Gives us the speeds of. Linear 67,000 miles per hour. Rotational 0 0.00011408 rotations per hour. So which sounds more crazy and unlikely? Which reflects reality? The truth? The speed of the Earth's rotation each day is 1039.302612 miles per hour. The Earth orbits the Sun at 67,000 miles per hour. This sounds like the motions are unbelievably fast and seem impossible. It is impossible we move at that speed. I would feel it. The speed of the Earth's rotation each day is 0 0.04178079 rotations per hour. The Earth orbits the Sun at 0 0.0001148 rotations per hour. 
This sounds like the motions are believable and seem reasonable. That seems like it would be really slow and there is unlikely that I could feel that motion. But I really like linear speed. I use that to drive, can't I use it? Yes. And you can even scale it. Well sort of. We have to go back to the rotational speed first, since linear speed is defined by rotational speed. But we can still use a reference that we are used to and familiar with so we can grasp the idea quite easy. Like we can use the tire from earlier as a scaled down version of the massive scale of the earth and the sun. We understand the size of the tire as we are around them constantly. We may have trouble with the size of the earth and the distance to the sun. It is only logical to scale the large, complicated size to a smaller scale that is easier to understand. So how fast would this scaled velocity be? Earth's rotation each day. 0.0417807.9 rotations per hour. Scaled speed. 0.0000553772618050 miles per hour. Earth's orbiting the sun. 0.0001140 rotations per hour. Scaled speed. 0.0000001512043699 miles per hour. Could you even feel this speed? Is this why we don't a Euro trademark T feel the Earth move? Is it because it is actually moving quite slowly? So why does this seem to be a major point of the flat Earth community? Is it because it is easy to confuse others if you twist the facts? The bigger question, why would they hide this truth from you?